Front engine cars have advantages and disadvantages. The exposure to clean air makes heat exchange for the very inefficient IC engine more efficient. With an IC engine being about 35% efficient, converting the fuel into movement, that is the best case, a large portion of the other 65% needs to be dissipated as heat, which makes the heat exchanger's position and function important. If then the vehicle wants to generate downforce, the aerodynamics start to get complex. In this video, I'll run different approaches in an attempt to pull air out of the engine bay with the purpose of creating downforce, but primarily considering the thermal management of the vehicle. The efficiency of a heat exchanger is mostly driven by the pressure gradient over the inlet and outlet. The larger the pressure gradient, the better. That is only true for the mass flow, or it is indicative of the mass flow rate through a volume where the air is moving from high pressure to low. It is a bit difficult to control the high pressure side, it's the low pressure on the outlet where improvements can be usually found. On a production car like this, there is limited options. The usual methods for reducing the outlet pressure is using bonnet vents. There are plenty of videos about vents, some are better than others. Julian Edgar covers the principles in his usual competent detail. Here I'll go through where and how venting the engine bay helps produce downforce. The problem space we are dealing with here is rather complicated. It isn't just a matter of placing vents on the bonnet. Three areas that are a particular concern is the downstream components like the rear wing, static pressure where the outlets are placed, and the pressure in the engine bay itself. Starting with the central vent, the air will be impacting the rear wing, so that will be a component to keep an eye on, and I'll come back to this later. But the central place on the bonnet isn't ideal as the windscreen is causing a high pressure field that we are feeding the air into, contrary to our working principle for the radiators. The pressure map shows this high pressure field that covers the vents is not nearly as high as the inlet pressure, but higher the inlet outlet pressure ratio, the better the efficiency. Because the outlet isn't ducted directly into the bonnet vent, we need to know about the engine bay pressures and flow characteristics. To understand the under and above bonnet pressure, I'll make the model transparent and place a pressure map behind the radiator. This pressure map on the plane has been exaggerated such that the pressure map isn't the same scale as what is used on the body, but it is used to illustrate the problem. Differences of the model to the real world, such as the size and placement of the engine is important, but the concept still holds. There is a large high pressure zone at the top, but the surrounding pressure is roughly the same as that on the bonnet outlet. Averaged out over the surface, it is 16.6 pascals above atmospheric. We aren't really getting the desired cascade of pressure gradients needed to drive the system. The obvious low pressure zone at the bottom suggests that the radiator is mostly going under the floor, even though there is a vent on the bonnet. Now hold on to your hats, I'm going to play some streamlines through this plane to see where the air is going. Yep. It is that bad. The length of these is 4 meters, so of the 50 that exist, only a dozen or so make it out the engine bay. One makes it out the vent. An animation of the streamlines gives us a chance to see some exit the engine bay before this image is consumed by chaos. Looking back at the previous model, it's a little bit different, but it is largely similar with the pressure mapped on the plane illustrating the high pressure top, low pressure bottom. So the central vents is how we are comparing the following variations. The next is the side vents. It is still in a higher pressure zone. Because the low pressure is so far forwards on this model, it gives a similar result. With these streamlines seen first, one is making it out the vent. Fading the model to transparent, we get to see the same chaos as before. 
the effect on downforce from the central vents from the baseline, there is a reduction of about 7%, half from the rear wing, half from the rear floor. So it's all at the rear. Compared to the side vents, these reduce downforce by an uncomfortable 22% from the baseline. A direct comparison, it is all of it is missing from the front. And that includes regaining the rear, the rear wing loss. The original hope was there would be an increase in front downforce, but this is exactly not what these results are showing. Therefore, going back to the central vent, I extended the floor almost all the way to the other floor section, just leaving a little gap. This restored all the total downforce, including some additional front downforce, finally. The reduction of downforce on the rear wing from the central vent is noticeable. It contributes almost 50% of this car's downforce. Running the comparative coefficient of the pressure plot over the span between this and the unaffected profile, it represents a 7.5% drop in performance. You could expect that with any given wing mounted behind the hatch, elevating it would reduce the impact of the centralized vent. The pressure map has the high pressure zone almost eliminated from the top. Clearly there is a general pressure top in the engine bay. Before the average over the surface was 16.6, .6, now it's 7.4 pascals above ambient. On top of the vent there is lower values, but there is also a lot more asymmetry, meaning turbulent, messy air. I don't really have my mind wrapped around what is going on here, but is not giving the right answer to more front downforce, so it was time to change tact. Going back to the late 90s, to the greatest period of touring car racing, Super Touring. Super Touring had some of the best engineers trying to pull performance from the inherently tight touring car rule set. At the end of the era, produced very decent downforce. I'm going to use this idea of the corn events that ended up appearing on all the cars. I've run this before on the Suzuki model with good results, so it was hoped to be replicated here. Directly swapping out the central vent with this corner vent saw a nice 20% improvement in downforce, almost all at the front. It more than doubled the tiny amount of front downforce to give a 30-60 front to rear split. Something almost reasonable. Pressure in the engine bay across the plane averages out just a tiny bit higher than the previous case, meaning that the driver of the engine bay pressure is under the floor. So I probably should give an explanation of how this works. Streamlines are great for tracing where the air comes from, just like before. This time, seeding some points directly on the vent seen by the mesh sphere. When I originally did this, I was surprised that the backwards propagated streamlines came out the front and through the radiator. This time, some also come from under the splitter, which explains some of the front downforce. Stepping back a little, they roll up nicely along the side. They're a bit far away from the floor edge to affect the floor. Just to confirm that these streamlines came through the radiator, even though the transparent body says they do, are sealed off the front sides of the radiator. I still left a gap at the side which pulled even more air off the radiator. Even then, there's still a number going through. The average from the pressure map surface with the corner vents is about the same as the previous central vent. Then the case with the front ducting, it increased the average to the highest number over all these results. Sealing the front off would be likely more efficient for the radiator, as the pressure gradient must be taken through the radiator rather than leaking around the sides. With this particular model that had terrible front lift as standard, it now has a decent bit of downforce. Overall, up to this model, 360 newtons of lift have been removed from the front axle at 30 meters per second. The overall total, it's about 660 newtons without adding any drag. The problem with using bonnet vents on this model and this car is that the front lift is right at the leading edge of the bonnet. If you ran the ducting from behind the radiator into this zone, then maybe you will get similar performance improvements to the corner vents. 
Placing the radiator vents on the bonnet without ducting doesn't seem like a great idea. With ducting, it may be a different story, and then the corner vents might even pull more air out under the splitter. <laughs>